It's me, Coach Drew, with no nickname today because the only nickname I would have used is Earl Cole, Earl Earl Cole's <laughs> Grin, which I've already used uh, two weeks ago. So I'm gonna pass on that. Joined today by uh, Emily, as always. Emily, how are you? Oh, I'm fabulous. I'm actually really upset that you didn't have a nickname. Now I feel like the odd man out. I, I worked I, so hard I, on this one. <laughs> anything that I could have said about Earl, I've said a lot in the past. So you're right, you're we'll, right. We'll talk just... about more. And then <laughs> joined by Gia Worthy. One, you know, I, I told her before we went on. If I can't get anyone from actual Survivor Fiji, there's only one person that I would want to come on to talk about Earl Cole and Survivor Fiji. And that is you, Gia. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, I One of the reasons I was so drawn to you when I first ventured out into the online Survivor community, because for so long I, I avoided it, uh, was the fact that you were a fan of this season uh, and like, not just one of these people. It's like, oh yeah, I'm a fan. It's like, no, you know your shit, <laughs> and we're gonna find out how much shit you know uh, over the next however many minutes. Uh, Gia, as always, is the first time on the show. What is your Survivor hot take? Thank you all for having me. So but happy to have you. Thank you. I'm so excited. I'm very honored. It was a very lovely introduction. So I cannot wait to be talking about my hot take, which is that Earl Cole is one of if not the greatest winner of all time i would argue at least like in contention for one of the greatest one-time players of all time if not the best and by extension fiji is a very underrated season that deserves as much praise as earl does for the complexities that are involved in it and i'm sure we're going to be talking a lot about it now but Specifically with Earl and then his win, I think this was a very impressive run for him. Just you can't argue with with his record, you know, is he voted one, sh- one vote shy of a perfect game. Yes, one Seriously. vote shy of a perfect game. Not only that, but he actually and I didn't know this until I did like some serious digging on it. Earl voted correctly, meaning he voted for the person that was going home every chance he got and you know how you know he went to tribal a lot being on the have nots tribe at the beginning but also then the only time that he didn't vote correctly was when they split that vote in the middle between Mookie and Alex and he just happened to be on the Alex side and of course we get his confessional the episode after being like I don't even want to split the votes you guys didn't even think that they were going to vote for each other so great Great mind for the game, great player, someone that I know, even if you're not a fan of Fiji, you're probably a fan of Earl in some capacity if you have seen Survivor as, and at least in contention of one of the players that probably most in demand to have play a second time. So Mm -hmm. big fan of Earl. I think he is one of the greatest winners we've ever had. And the story of Fiji leading to his win is just incredible as a black fan in particular. Yes. And, if we want to just start from the very beginning of, you know, from the, the, the optics were not great coming off of Cook Islands because they did Survivor Race Wars. And based off what the cast looked like going into 14, it kind of looked like, hey, we're just doing Race Wars Part 2, Electric Boogaloo. And if it wasn't for uh, a certain someone dropping out at the last second, I feel like we probably would have gotten Race Wars 2. Mm-hmm. Um, which, you know what, if that had happened, it means that a minority probably would have won just based off of how the first one went. Um, but we get introduced to a lot of the different characters, but specifically Dreams, who, uh, at first, when I remember first watching Fiji and not being a fan of G- Dreams at all early, uh, just because I just felt like he was loud and i'm not loud so i was like oh man this guy is the worst and then as the season progressed i started to for lack of a better phrase fall for him uh we were introduced to cassandra cassandra uh we were introduced to anthony who i related to the most obviously uh, out of everyone on the cast and earl gm tell us the earl story as far as how he ended up there and the, 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 not the first couple of rounds, but just 
Earl going into the show and your initial thoughts on him. So for those that don't know, pretty much all of Fiji, except for one player who was ended up being an early boot, an unfortunate medevac such quit situation. But we had a uh, Pretty much all of Fiji is a cast of recruits. So they have very varying knowledge of the show. And I'd argue out of everyone that we had for recruits, Earl probably knew the least about Survivor going in because mm-hmm. he was a last minute addition to the show, didn't had never seen the show before, goes in playing with, you know, the players that he had. Not only that, but ended up being on Ravu, which is, you know, Fiji is kind of defined in a negative light because of the haves versus have not twist and earl started the game on ravu which was the have not tribe meaning that they got nothing they did not get anything to help them survive the round I, they didn't get a pot they didn't get anything that was uh provided to them or they might have gotten a pot but they got like the bare minimum i think like, it was like a pot and a machete and that like, yeah. they didn't even get rice right like get flint it, they yeah. Yeah. So they started this with nothing, like less than what a normal survivor season would give its players. And then on the other side of it, the Moto tribe was the Haves tribe and pretty much the exact opposite in that while, yeah, some tribes get a little more comfort than others, this tribe got the mother load of necessities and non-essentials. So, you know, they got a couch, they got a swing, they got all of these goodies, like all of this food, they got coffee, they, I could go on and on and on about everything that Moto got, but they were living the life. So it shouldn't be a shock to anybody that Robin went to tribal council a lot. And by extension, Earl went to tribal council a lot. And he had to define a lot of these relationships on a tribe that was starving, that was dehydrated and was losing everything and were obsessed with the fact that they were losing everything. And, you know, on a tribe where you're playing for a million dollars, of course, that's what you're going to feel like. But Earl had a plan because uh, starting on the first day, they made a all black alliance that three of its members would end up being the final three. And obviously a lot of things happen in between that, but you could say this is one of the most successful alliances you've ever had in Survivor history, because despite the fact that we haven't seen their edit where they actually are able to discuss the black Alliance, this is the Alliance that defines the game and makes it to the final three. Yeah. And so before I'd say my piece. Emily, what were your initial thoughts on Earl specifically at the beginning of the game? Did you have any thoughts on him or were you, were your eyes on uh, other folks at that point? Well, I would die for dreams. We'll start there. And I think that like he, he came in with a bang, but I think that that was such a good strategy because people knew who he was, but he still seemed like that, like lovable little brother type, you know, which a lot of people would sort of like take under their wing and nurture and, you know, and then help to be like, be there to like to support him, you know, I'm um, also kind of like an under threatening type of player in that sort of realm, you know, just socially, but like Earl, uh, which is like the reason for my name today is I noticed him and I knew that he was there and he has a very commanding presence, but not in a, um, uh, like not in a way where it would feel like threatening. Um, and I think, so to me, I knew that he was there, but he was, he's very, very calm. And that's that the, the ability to stay calm, especially whenever you were in a tribe like Ravu and, you know, started from literally the bottom. Um, re- like, I think that alone speaks multitudes. Yeah. I, like I mentioned earlier, I, I, I immediately connected to Anthony because he was, uh, unless I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think if, I, if I'm forgetting someone, but I'm pretty sure Anthony was the first blurred that we got uh, on the show. And for anyone that watched my interview with Davey, you know how much I love the blurred archetype. And I'm pretty sure Anthony was one of the first. So I immediately connected with him. But like both of them just said, um, Earl had this presence about him that I, you know, I connected with him. I didn't pay much attention to him, you know, mm-hmm. in the early days of Ravu, only because I hate, I hate, hate Rocky. Um, like, it, it's, it's, the reason that Fiji 
will always have a bad taste in my mouth is because of the pre-merge. And not really the merge. The merge is fine. The merge is fun. Uh, the pre-merge, just consistently getting this Rocky Anthony BS. And at any point, and I, like, even when I first watched it, I was probably like, I don't know, 15 or something. And I knew I hadn't heard anything in the media about someone being kicked off the show. But every episode, I'm like, Anthony's going to snap and hit this dude. Yeah. And I'm so glad he didn't because, you know, you shouldn't fight. But... At any moment, Rocky has to go, right? Like, before Anthony. That would be crazy if he stayed before Anthony. And once Anthony went, I, I was firmly on the... I was on the Earl Yao Man bandwagon, because of course I was. Uh, how cliche. Um, but I was firmly on the... I think this is a good chance of us getting a black winner, because once that merge hit, and we have three, and... Two of them are kind of flying under the radar slash in the middle. And then you have Dreams, who's, you know, a member of this four horsemen type alliance. Four type. It is what it is. Three um, plus one. <laughs> yeah. Um, so he's he's a very big character. But I'm like, even if Dreams wins, I'm all right with this. <laughs> and, uh, you know, but I was firmly on that Earl bandwagon. And what we're going to continue to talk about is the fact that he really was never in any type of danger because people enjoyed him or people were going after other people he was associated with, but they never went after him. And they never, the, I'll go to the Lisey thing or no, it wasn't Lisey. Uh, it was, um, I don't who was the one that talked down to dreams about the coffee. That was Stacy with yes. Stacey kind of on the side. Yeah. There are moments where people talk to the other, the two other black players at the merge, like they're less than, but we never get any content of people talking to Earl like that. And I think that that gives, you know, uh, stock to what you guys are saying about the fact that he has this something about him that's mm -hmm. not scared, not necessarily scared people, but oh, I dare you to say something to me about this. Yeah. Your ass is going and, home if this ever happens. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Jill. Well, I was going to say, like, kind of building off of what you're saying, definitely in the beginning, I feel like Earl just always seemed like a steady presence. Like, he was, mm -hmm. they made sure to show him, and eventually you would find out that he was the winner. And that's why they, they, he had a very consistent presence. But he was always had his very calm rationale about him. He had like a very distinguished vibe about him compared to, uh, his fellow competitors that made mm -hmm. it seem like this was definitely someone in the mix combined with this friendship with Yao Man, which is probably one of the big highlights of the season because they're both a very well-liked duo. And I don't yeah. blame them. You know, this is a really fun pair. And like Earl says, you know, who would have predicted that like a black man and an older Asian man were going to be like best buds on the island. But yeah. like that's some of the wonderful things about Survivor are those unlikely duos. So that yeah. was always really fun. And I that was one of the early highlights, which I, I can understand. I think the pre-merge was, uh, you know, had a couple low points in there. Anthony was, I was also a black nerd, so excited to see a black nerd. So even when Anthony was really like going through it, he always had a smile on his face. He was cracking jokes to the camera. He was such a great narrator of the pre-merge and that is what i will always remember him i really wish we had him as a juror he's like one vote away from making jury but right. anthony will always be a positive presence to me and you know i'm happy that he was someone that we got to know pretty well throughout the game and even though he left right before you know kind of that halfway point i'd love to see him play again and Dreams was always, like, I could I could understand that, like, he could run, rub people the wrong way with just he's very loud. He was very, you know, like, uh, he knew what he felt and he would tell you. But he was never mean-spirited. And I think, like, similar to what Em was saying, you know, this is someone that I connected with at, starting from the very beginning. You know, he recognized when people were not treating him well and he was able to you know uh successfully maneuver the game all the way to the end with his alliances and was much smarter than anyone on that 
uh, in that season gave him credit for. And I think that's something that is often understated about dreams is yes, he, was, he did a lot of, uh, he did a lot of big moves and he was a very formidable player in the game, but he's also very smart and was yeah. very clearly able to tell the social dynamics of both tribes that he was on and in the merge. So it, I think it was, he's a spectacular player and I, I'm sad that that's another play that we haven't seen return again, because I mm -hmm. think he really did have a mind for the game. He did. Yeah. And I think that that like we have a lot of different players where like we give them if we give them a second chance, we really are able to see them like mature a little bit more and have mm. a little bit more life experience in the game. Like we even saw that like with, with Rob Mariano, like, we can even just mm -hmm. use him as like a baseline, you know, yeah. the first season of Marquesas, we barely saw him. He was a little bit more of a rambunctious kind of, you know, like yeah. like like young man, you know, who is still trying yeah. to find his footing and understand how the game works. You know, yeah. Dreams made much bigger moves even in his first season, was able mm -hmm. to make it to the end, had a really clear understanding of social dynamics and where he fit in with those social dynamics, mm -hmm. specifically in that like four horsemen alliance. Mm -hmm. You know, he knew what the he knew from the start that 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 was not something that would be something that would get him to the very end, you know? And so I think that if we were able to bring him back, we would have been able to see such major waves this, this mm -hmm. second time around, you know? Yeah. This yeah. is actually secretly my a way of trying to push my agenda that we need more Fiji players returning. Yes, we've only <laughs> had one. We've only had only, one. Only yeah, just Yaman, man, right? Yeah, yep, early boot. Yeah. And, I mean, off the top of my head, people that I would – if I was being real, people that I would want to see come back on this season probably would be uh, four. Um, I, you know, I was plenty peeved that we never got dreams back. Uh, mm -hmm. I know that at the time and for most of Survivor history until recently when people have started to think logically – um, people have just deemed him as like this horrible human being for this whole truck incident that which we have you know, to talk about. We, yeah. which we will get to in just a second. I'm so and excited about it. <laughs> they, 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 they demonize him not only as uh, like not only the the certain members of the jury, which we will also get to, but just the internet, the the cesspool that is Survivor Reddit, uh, Facebook. Red, uh, Facebook Reddit, Facebook Survivor fans, certain ones. I've started to notice that they are starting to go down the Reddit path of just like saying really crazy stuff um, or stuff that's very outdated. Um, and this whole thing about Dreams doing this, it's like you guys will praise up and down, left and right, all directions. Russell Hans because he's done all these amazing things and he changed the game and all this bullshit. Um, but when Dreams does it, when Dreams does something that would push his game forward um, and actually sits there and struggles with it on camera, you demonize him. Uh, so I don't mind taking a little detour here and going to the uh, the truck incident because you you can't talk about Fiji without it. Um, yeah. And we'll start with you first. Thoughts on it initially, and thoughts on it on any type of rewatch you've had since then. No, absolutely. I think that like um, the the first time I watched it, I think I was like eight. You know, so that to me didn't have as much of an impact. You know, especially you know back then that wasn't the big focus. The focus tend to be just like on the winner, you know, or on like the big blind side, you know. And um, I watched it the second time at the start of the pandemic. And I still remember, like, I honestly did feel kind of like, like that goes beyond the game. Like how could, it? but then whenever you rewatch it with the context of new school survivor to watch like how the games evolved, you know, everything dreams did in my opinion was, was perfectly sound. I think that what he did was he was able to establish a community of trust and security with Yao man say that, Yao Man won the, the idol at the end. Like, would Yao Man have been able to establish that mutual trust with, with Dreams at the very end of that final four, you know, if he said no? Um, and I also think that Dreams did what he had to do to kind of get himself a little bit further. And if he argued that, you know, and if he really stayed true to that, and if the jury gave him the ability to articulate that, um, I think we would have seen a, a different outcome. I don't know entirely, but at least one or one or two votes would have probably gone to him. Gia? 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So I have a lot to say about the car deal. I will keep yeah, it please do. concise. Yes. Yeah. So I just, I think it helps to break down that episode, but also the dynamics of that, of that point of the game where they were at final six. So it was pretty much a foregone conclusion that Stacy and Boo were kind of interchangeable with where they were going at that point. It was going to be Boo going whenever he didn't win immunity and Stacy you know, would be, would follow suit afterwards. Now, and of course it got a little complicated with Yao Min playing the idol and everything, but this is again, something that happened as a result of the car deal for, so in that episode, you know, we, the players that end up being the final four are really thinking ahead to how they are going to maneuver the final four, because it seems pretty clear at this point that Unless Boo keeps winning immunities, this is the final four that we're going to get. And it's a great final four. And so Yao Man, which is, again, it's in his right, figured that he was uh, a way that he could uh, increase his chances of making it to the final three would be to make a deal with Dreams, which in this case would be the car deal. And so um, in that if... Dreams get something he wants, which in this case is the truck, then Yao Man will get the immunity necklace, which will propel him to final three and likely will make him the winner. So, you know, all within his right. But then you also put in the fact that the reason Dreams really wanted to win the car was because he is the only player in the game that does not have a car. He doesn't even have a license because he couldn't even imagine having a car at that point. And... The, what they didn't show, which is something that has been written about on several times, was that the initial plan was for the um, the players to throw the game, throw the reward to Dreams before they realized that it was like a, a three on three setup and everything. But the plan wow. was to have uh, the plan was for everyone to throw that reward challenge to Dreams once they realized that it was the car competition, but. Again, it isn't within the game of Survivor, if we're going to say like anything goes, then it is within Yao Man's right to try to win the car, even if it feels a little underhanded, but it's within his right to use winning the car to his advantage to try to make a deal with Dreams, which would propel him to the final three if that deal is followed through. Yao Man is fully aware that there is a world where Dreams wins final four immunity and does not follow through with this deal which is why they made it clear that if dreams wins immunity and does not uh and does not give uh yao man the immunity necklace he still gets to keep the truck now when after this deal is made dreams gets to go on the reward and everything and yao man um and you know like everyone knows that this final four deal is now in place uh we cut right to a confessional with Yao Min on Exile Island, which makes it very clear that this is not just a plan to get Yao Min to the final three. This is specifically a plan to get Dreams specifically out at final four. He does mm. not, they weren't sure at this point if it was going to be a final three or a final two because when they were filming, Cook Islands hadn't aired yet. So they didn't know the final three reveal at that point. But they he did not want dreams to be able to win immunity did not want him to win out and they knew that if with that final four if yao man or if dreams wins immunity cassandra and dreams are not going they i mean cassandra and earl are not going dreams is the only option at that point so this is specifically a plan to get dreams out at this point now cut to dreams at the reward where he says makes the realization of the same thing is like oh like this is something that benefits Yao Man. This is not him just doing something out of the kindness of his heart. This is him trying to get me out. And then this is where all the dilemmas come in. Yao, uh, Cassandra and uh, Dreams try to get uh, Yao Man out at the final six at that point. So Dreams doesn't have to honor that deal. And all the other mess that happens up until that point. So really, the car deal was something that was specifically made so that Yao Min would be in final three and Dream specifically would be voted out. This was the best way for Yao Min to assure or at least increase his chances of the, both of those things happening. So, mm -hmm. and even if this wasn't the full plan, it is Survivor and everything 
goes in that po point. We've had people lie about all kinds of things back and forth. We were talking about how people praise players like Russell Hans or Johnny Fairplay with the dead grandma lie. So someone going back on their word when they know the outcome is them getting voted out is completely within the realm of survivor and just because there is a car involved like let us not pretend that yao man as much as i love yao man was doing this out of the kindness of his heart this was, he was admitted to it he he felt i think i don't know who i did saw him do an interview with but he felt like he was gonna be portrayed as the villain in that yes. situation yes wow. so and i and i love both of them i am a huge dreams fan he's one of my favorite players ever especially one of my favorite one-time players ever and i'm a big fan of yao man too so like there are thinking about this in several layers. And I think it's good for both of them. These are two very smart players, but Yao Man knew what the risk was and Dreams did the thing that was best for his game. This was strategy. This is completely within the realms of acceptable survivor play. Did I think this would probably cement the fact that Dreams was not winning? Yes, but you know, this was, you know, he played an amazing game and he had a hand in everything. And I think that, uh, you know, like this car deal is a defining moment in Fiji, but they uh, it often is framed as how dare dreams, but we really should be saying go dreams. He is actually able to do what it takes to get to the end. Absolutely. That's really, really well said. Yeah, no. So my, my opinion, my opinion on the, on all of it, uh, like I said, the first time I watched it, it's like, okay, that's fucked up, but it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. And then I, when I entered into the online survivor community and I saw how much hate he was getting, this was in 2019, 2020, uh, when I finally joined and people are, you know, crapping all over dreams. And I remember sitting there thinking, I, the fact that I didn't remember, like, I didn't remember that from the first time I had watched Fiji. And I had watched Fiji probably twice before 2020. And I still didn't really remember that moment because it didn't like it didn't stand out as like that big moment to me because Earl winning was the only real big moment for me at that point. Mm -hmm. And I remember rewatching Fiji again and specifically waiting for that episode or that series of episodes. And when it finally happened, you know, I felt for the guy sitting there crying, you know, saying, oh, yeah, I swear I would do this, but I, I understand that if I do this, I'm going home. And I'm like, yeah, I would do the exact same thing. And I feel like most people, including the ones that shit talk dreams, uh, would do the same thing. Yeah. If they were in that situation and they had a chance to potentially go to the end and win a million dollars uh, or go home, I think everyone would choose to go to the end and play for a million dollars. Um, so that that's always rubbed me the wrong way. And this is kind of the larger issue. Um, you know, I saw a, a question in, in the comments about why we think that certain players haven't come back in the season. And if I just want to specify dreams, I feel like, Dreams did nothing wrong this season. Dreams was probably the second best character overall on the season behind Yao Man, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason that they didn't is because, well, let's see. Russell Hans does all this crazy stuff. He gets brought back a few times, has his nephew brought in a couple times. Cool. Johnny Fairplay does what he does. They bring Johnny Fairplay back for one. Actually, for like no a blink of an eye. <laughs> um, you know, we have all these. We, we had Colton who didn't do anything like this. He actually did horrible mm -hmm. and said horrible things and they had him come back. Right. All of a sudden dreams does this one thing and we don't even get whispers of a dream return or dreams return yeah. at any point, at least uh, from where I was at. Um, and I yes, have, I, know I have a question who, about this. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So I, I want both of your opinions on this. So, back like i would still qualify this as like an, an old school survivor season it's it's yeah. pretty old school and a lot of the times whenever we differentiate between old school and new school you know that the big differentiation is that old school is like 
taking the relationships a little bit more seriously, you know, um, it's like more long lasting longevity and like, um, you know, playing the game with some sort of, uh, like dignity, quote unquote, is typically what a lot of players tend to fall under is like, there, there, there's a, there's a role, you know, but in, in new school survivor, the big concept is strategy and outwitting and, you know, finding new ways to keep yourself on the right side of the numbers. That it's, it's always a consistency. Um, and so I think that one of the big reasons that dreams got a lot of heat, especially back then was just because of the different values that we placed on survivor and survivor etiquette, quote unquote. So I guess like my question for you guys would, is that if he were to come back and if we were to see this exact same incident with the exact same characters lay out in like survivor 35, 36, um, do you think that it would have been received by the audience the same way? Jeez. No, it uh, I mean, no, I I think that on one hand, I think a move like this would be praised in 2022 as being yeah. this underhanded move. And like that was brilliant and that Dreams made the right decision because it's Survivor and that's the things that happen. He would still get some hate, definitely, mm -hmm. particularly because the fan favorite was the one that took the fall for this plan. So I think that is part of it. Yao Man was overwhelmingly the most liked player of this season. But I, I think he probably still would have gotten some hate. But also, like, Fiji, season 14, by this point, we've seen the dead grandma lie. We've seen everything with all stars. True. We've seen We've seen underhanded gameplay before this. This is not the honor and integrity era still, you know? True. Yeah, so... And again, and I think Earl played a fantastic game. I'm not trying to say, you know, Dream should have won. I think he should have got a respect for the amount of moves that he made in that season, including the card deal. And it was definitely the right call on this point. I think, unfortunately, because he was a black man that was mm -hmm. playing a magnificent game, people didn't want to think of him as an intelligent man because of his age and just... How, you know, he was uh, loud and proud, uh, you know, like very outspoken. Yeah. Um, those are all the things that I really liked about him. But that's not going to be for everyone. And I think people wanted to think that he was just making moves to be evil when really he's making moves to get himself to the end. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And it's funny because I feel like or I felt like such a damn hypocrite. Um because well, like I mentioned earlier, you know, I, oh yeah, like dreams in the pre-marriage. I didn't know. Another one of my favorite players of all time is Sean Rector from Marquesas. Mm -hmm. and, Mark, uh, and Sean Rector was loud and proud all of the time. And I loved him all of the time. So I don't know where that disconnect happened with me yeah. as far as the two of them, but it's just something that I like kind of popped in my head uh, mm -hmm. while y'all were talking. So I do, before we get to that final tribal, I do want to quickly talk about the the trio, the the final three. They're edited as a group, especially in that finale episode leading up to it. Because I, mm -hmm. especially on a rewatch, on many rewatches, I felt like it was kind of shitty. Uh, I felt like they were being portrayed as something that, for all we know, and I feel like we do kind of know that they, you know, is not true. Um, and I felt like it was like a huge stereotype, which was wild. Um, the laziness and all that. And so, um, either one of you, uh, well, uh, I guess we'll start with Emily first. Um, what was your, what were your thoughts on that final three? Um, as far as how they were portrayed, did you kind of figure Earl's got this wrapped up? And uh, don't touch anything on, on Final Tribal because that'll be the last thing. That we okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that, um, you know, holistically, you know, looking at all three of them, I think that they were all excellent contenders, but for different reasons. But my, I, I, I do put a lot of the blame sometimes on editing. You know, I think that like Cassandra, like she had a very, very brilliant game. It was a softer game, but that's not a bad game or like a lesser than game, you know? And I think that um, if they were to edit it in a different way, it would have been able to kind of give her like a little bit more of like a contender um, sort of role. 
Um, and I think that, I don't know, I think that like dreams, he, he kind of, they, they played him almost as like the villain, at least by the time they got to the end, which is like, I, I don't, whenever you rewatch it with a critical eye, you're like, I don't, I don't know why I was rooting against him or why I didn't think that he was as worthy, you know, because he really is like such a lovable character, especially whenever you get to that final. Yeah. Gia. I love this final three. I've always loved this final three. Yeah. I think I, wa I was about 12 when Fiji aired and I watched it as it was airing. So I was very excited at the prospect of having a black winner. Um, I started watching Survivor when Vanuatu aired. Um, so I hadn't seen Vesepius win. And I was not like someone that went online afterwards. So I didn't, you know, I didn't, I kind of just took the seasons as I processed them as like a preteen. So I loved this final three and kind of going off of what Em's already said, they're, uh, you know, they have very different personalities. I think Earl, standout winner, fantastic social games, fantastic strategic game, was a powerhouse throughout the season, never in danger. All great things, all of the reasons why I think a lot of people think of him in such a high regard. Cassandra, she got dealt a difficult hand. I know she was on the Haves tribe, but she was on a tribe with people that did not treat her in dreams well. Like they were when, uh, when Gary, um, when I think Papa Smurf was his nickname, I think. But uh, yeah, Papa, Papa Smurf, Smurf. Yeah. Yeah. When he left the game, dreams talked about how like I'm sad because he's one of the only people I talked to. It was like him and Cassandra. But Cassandra had a good social game, and she was able to survive the few rounds that. Uh, she was on Moto before she got swapped on to Moto 2.0. And that is where she built alliances and established relationships that lasted her throughout the game. Like she was, uh, you know, Stacy trusted her wholeheartedly and uh, Cassandra was willing to try to keep her in the game um, until Yao Man played his idol. So, you know, she... Um, so Cassandra had these relationships that were able to keep her safe and, you know, was everyone always assumed that she was going to be towards the end and whether it was because they thought she was non-threatening is kind of a moot point because she still made it to the end and made it further than all of her naysayers and dreams. We've already talked a lot about dreams. I won't go too much more into him, but I think he was an excellent player, a little young, but he was always very kind. He wanted to play the game and play it as well as he could, but he was never particularly mean spirited about anything other than maybe like the occasional annoyance at the goings ons of yeah. the game, which who hasn't amongst right. us. So I think watching it, I was excited and I liked this final three a lot. I liked Yao Man of course too, but it was just a great final three altogether. And I didn't think about it when I was originally watching it about how I knew it was an all black final three and I was very excited for the all black final three, but I didn't really think of them as a unit as much because the edit didn't show it, but then rewatching it, knowing that there was a black Alliance, you can see moments in the game where it's very clear that there is a black Alliance. So when Erica gets voted out, Anthony's the only one to vote to keep her and Earl was on XL Island this whole time. When Anthony gets voted out, Dreams is really the only person that try, that is trying to gather votes for him to stay over Rocky. And the only reason he ends up voting for Anthony is because they don't have the numbers to keep him. And it's very obvious that they don't have the numbers to keep him. And even when they're talking about, you know, blindsiding different players, like blindsiding Yao Man or going against the grain, there is never a discussion about voting out Earl or voting out Cassandra or voting out Dreams once we get to that finale like there or once we get towards the end like the they never even like fathom the idea of like betraying one another it never comes up and i think that shows that even if they were always going to have their games in mind then but they wanted to go as far with each other as much as possible even if the goal is um the, even if the goal is to like for them to be the winner. And I really like that about this three. When you rewatch it, knowing all of these things, you can see hints of it. I think they should have gone more. I think there should have been more focus on the final three 
and why this is the final three and how they interact with one another. And I think a lot of the content about them as a Black Alliance was taken out because they just didn't, you know, they didn't want to show a yeah. Black Alliance making it to an end and a Black Alliance that were explicitly working with each other. Yeah. They didn't shape like their individual stories like they do now, I think, especially. Mm -hmm. I think they tr really try to at least build or like, well, at least we, we saw that a lot more with like 41 as they really tried to shape like the background and why they're here and the people yeah. that they that they that they have at home and, you know, why they need the money, you know. And I think that that like, honestly, I didn't feel as like emotionally connected, especially to Cassandra. I feel like she kind of got gypped with like her whole journey, you know, and that to me would have been more beneficial to understand her and her gameplay at the end. Yeah, and I do think they kind of undermined their games with this edit that we were left with. If you know what yeah. to look for, you can still appreciate the players. Definitely. But I shouldn't have to know to look for the final three doing a really good job. You know, I shouldn't. I know these are very strategic, intelligent players, but that's only because I know Fiji like the back of my hand. Like the edit should be showing us this. Absolutely. I don't know why this popped in my head, but it's the uh it's kind of similar be with me on this one it's kind of how let's say you go into an mcu movie and you've never watched or read any of the comics never read any of the cartoons yet you're still invested in everything that happens and are surprised when certain things happen and not surprised when other things happen it's the same thing where it's like we shouldn't you know, we shouldn't have to, I, I have, but we shouldn't have to read the comic books to know what's going on in the movie. Similarly, we shouldn't have to do all of this research outside of watching the show to know that what's going on in the show is actually pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, we, we have our own, you know, we're, we're shown what we're shown, but like Gia just said, she has had to do a lot of research on her own. I've had to do a lot of research on my own. A lot of fans have to learn, not even, not even just Fiji, just other seasons where things were going on that we were not shown, and it leads for a better watching experience. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. It leads for a better, you know, th yes, all Black Final 3, great. I'm, I'm always going to be happy about it. But when I first found out that it was the plan all along. It totally changed everything I thought about the season because Fiji for the longest time was in my bottom 10, mainly because of the pre-merge and uh, the whole Anthony Rocky thing. Cause I loved the merge. Uh, when we did a couple weeks ago, we did our favorite blind sides and somewhere in my top five was the Edgardo blind side. Yeah. So I, I love, I love what Fiji has become to me. Uh, and it's people like Gia that have made it rise even farther in, uh, on my list. Um, but before we do bounce, I do want to talk about the final three tribal because for, in my opinion, besides all stars, this is probably the most heated. uncomfortable final tribal that I've watched mm -hmm. ever. And I, I've talked to you before because I, I live for the drama, especially with the final tribal. Like I like I especially all stars. Like I, I live for the heat, the passion, but this one was just a very different um, thing, you know. I think that like for me, um, like Alex, he the way that he Alex was the trying worst. I I was in shock by the way. I guess it's because he has like a lawyer background, you know. So he thought that like he was like, "This is my time to shine. I'm gonna go down swinging." Maybe like I, I don't know, but it it did not like come off well, right. especially. He was playing for favorites. Favorites. Also, he's just wrong because Cassandra didn't even vote Stacy out in the tribal that she got voted out. She got idled out because Yaman played an idol and only yeah. Earl and. Yaman voted for her so it was just incorrect um and first of all these people were plastered I just don't know what else yeah. to tell you like this like mm -hmm. they were drunk there is absolutely no like reason or logic behind at like half of these statements that they're all yeah. you know they like, thought Lisey? they like nailed it like mm -hmm. I got yeah. I'm really giving it to them yeah but, like, it's just it came off disrespectful and I wish again and I wish we got to see <laughs> The final three. And Sorry, like, I was looking like, at a comment. Sorry, go ahead. 
their journey. I wish we got to see the final three as like the journey to the final three. Because yeah, when you watch it, when I when I watched Fiji on a binge, to me, it's a story about this final three personally, uh, like persevering through being the underdog, Earl being on Ravu and Cassandra and Dreams uh being at the bottom of the pecking order on the have on the Haves tribe. Um, and them really going through it through this season. They did not have it easy, particularly in the beginning. And they lost two of their alliance members before the merge. That is not something that all alliances can recover from. But this alliance did. And now, because the jury did not think of these players as people that were smarter than them or people that could outplay them or people that, to them, were deserving of the money, they wanted to, like really trash them for playing a better game because this is what this is they didn't get there by luck they did it by outplaying their jury so you know and i think because this is recruits they don't have the same respect for the game mm -hmm. so we had like lisey's trash speech which i'm like if i never see lisey again in the game it's like yeah what was up with her speech i don't under mm -hmm. i didn't understand any of yeah. it like i didn't I get actually, it <laughs> yeah uh i actually forgot that like i knew she was awful to Dreams and Cassandra, which made sense because they started the game together. They were on the same tribe. But she even had some nasty words for Earl. So it was just like, I don't understand why she like felt the need to do this, but other than she just wanted to get some good zingers in. But yeah. drunk like, or no drunk, like yeah. And like yeah. you ask Dreams how many zeros are in a million. My favorite part is that he's just like six. And then yeah. immediately afterwards, like not only does he answer correctly, but he's like pushing back. It's like, did you think I was stupid? Did you think that I wasn't? At, that, yeah. at this point, you know, Dreams isn't getting Lisey's vote. So yeah, I'm glad Dreams was holding his own and actually pushing back, as was Cassandra. But they shouldn't have to. Yeah. I would... Uh, I would just like to like reiterate that like Yao Man, even though he was just voted out, which can be a very hard place to be in jury, was very kind and just wanted to know like, Earl, why did you vote me out? But then also uh, was very forgiving of dreams, which can be very hard to do when you just get publicly betrayed like that, which Again, Dreams was in the right to do so, but it seems ironic that Yao Man seems to be one of the only people that seems to accept his own million dollar loss. So absolutely, yeah. So you know who it wasn't was a dick during that. that whole thing was I, what Rocky. Was that? You know who wasn't a dick? Rocky did turned out to not be because they fed him a cheeseburger. That's you know, why yeah. he wasn't a pos like he was the entire game. Yeah, uh, and I think like Mookie was. Uh, pretty you know Vuki wasn't terrible he was like he was obviously very pissed and I think he kind of had a reason not a reason to be in that like he's been voted out of the game for a while but uh I didn't hate Mookie on my rewatch which I think you know being in the four horsemen was kind of like a miracle because I really don't like the other two but the Mookie you know like he told dreams about the idol and then kind of got on the bottom side of the votes because of it but again that's kind of the nature of the game and uh i love earl's answers throughout the oh, yeah throughout the tribal i i feel like it was pretty obvious that earl was winning i'm sure he was just thinking of all the ways he was spending his million dollars but he gave really good answers he did um, yeah and I think that honestly like in in almost every single like finale that we get to a lot of the jury is not entirely sure. Like, they may have ideas, but I think that, like, half of the battle is that final jury, which is terrible and terrifying because at that point, like, you're so broken down from 39 days and, like, you have to, like, defend every single horrible thing that you had to do to get to where yeah. you are, you know? And I think that he handled it so well. I really appreciated, like, the way oh, he yeah. was so composed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, you guys said basically everything I was going to say anyway. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, no, 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 that's, that's good. Cause I don't have to reiterate it. I will say yes. Lisey, scumbag. Uh, Alex, yeah. scumbag. Edgardo, great vote out face. Scumbag. Um, and Rocky, who knew, who knew? Uh, but. He was softy at the end. <laughs> who knew? Oh, he actually needed it was the burger, like you said. Uh, uh, no, I apologize to Anthony. Oh, yeah, because at the reunion, he brought it up again. Like, he was messing with Anthony again. It's like, I hate you again. 
<laughs> I, I'm sorry. But, I, I, I don't want to so rant about this again. But apparently, like, though, and so I've read like the quarantine confessionals from 2020. Apparently, yeah. they still are in touch, which is like Anthony is one of the few survivor players that Rocky actually keeps in contact with, too. My so heart. That is see? actually so wholesome. <laughs> Oh. But they need to still like be in contact with people. So it's like, you know, like who knows? Maybe he just needed, maybe the food was the problem. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, like, also, he does not look like problems, Stallone. But yeah. it doesn't look like Stallone. I never got the whole Rocky thing. Uh, but in summation, um, as we as we wrap up here, um, you know, at speaking as yeah, a black man. Um, Earl Cole winning, like I said earlier, it didn't hit me like the Vesepi one hit me because it had already happened. Uh, and him being a black male didn't really register with me because a black woman had already done it. And you know, you guys know the hierarchy, how usually how things go. Um, so Earl winning, I, I constantly, uh, consider Earl to be my favorite winner. Uh, I think that he is uh you know as far as social game he's top two as far as strategic game he's probably top two top three physical game doesn't matter um the fact and the fact that he was able to get to this final three with you know with this alliance that they had started from the get-go something that a lot of winners can't say they did a lot of winners sat at the end with one person they were aligned with or two people they were against the entire game and he I'm not going to say it was all him because it wasn't like we've just, we've spent a lot of time talking about that, but he was able to get to the end with three of his initial Alliance and was able to sell himself to a jury that was pissed drunk and very pissed off uh, and get every one of their votes. And like I said before, if not for one rogue vote would have been the first perfect game in the uh, history of Survivor. Absolutely. And maybe we don't look at JT or Cochran in the same light after that because it wouldn't have been them doing it first and second. It would have been Earl and everyone would have looked at Earl, at Earl as the, the, the hood emblem of what a perfect winner looks like. I still look yeah. at him as, a, as what the perfect winner looks like. Yeah, um, definitely. But... Thank you both so much. I know we went longer than we usually do, but um, Gia warned us at the beginning. I feel like me and Emily were. I was strapped in. I'm I'm so excited that you're Um, here. It's like, it's so good to have someone who loves Fiji on the show. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you all for tuning in now and on Spotify and on YouTube and all that jazz. Uh, Next week is the Jeremy Collins episode. I'm very pumped because Cambodia is my second favorite season. Uh, it's one of my faves too. Um, so hyped. I'm, think, I'm trying to think of anything else that I need to talk about before we go. Make sure to subscribe, all that jazz. Mm-hmm. Follow Gia on her Twitter. Um, and I think that's everything. So until next time, we will see y'all on the other side. See ya.